Have you ever been scammed? I have. In fact, I just got scammed today and earlier this year, too. I also had my credit card number stolen this year for the very first time in my life, which, you know, being 58 and not having credit cards and debit cards my entire life, but for most of my life, I think it's pretty good that I've I've gotten to the age of uh, 58 uh, without that happening before. I mean, almost 58. Um, So I, I wanted to warn you about the scam I fell victim to today. It's pretty slick. And um, so it, what happened was this. <clears throat> I decided I, I, I get uh, help from the state of Ohio, thankfully, um, and I'm on Medicaid and so is my son. It can be hard being a single dad. And so I decided I wanted to switch from my current Medicaid provider to another company. Obviously, it's kind of self-explanatory, I guess. So I got on a website and I found out the phone number for the company I wanted to switch to, or so I thought. So I called that number up, not having been careful to check the source of that phone number, which... (sighs) I'm human. I try very hard to avoid getting scammed, and I have foiled many scam attempts, and I've fallen a victim to a few. Like when I was in my 20s, I fell victim, or sorry, 30s, I fell victim to a couple of romance scams. Yeah. Anyways, so I called them up. They represented themselves as being from the health insurance company that I thought I was calling, which, you know, very clever of them. And uh, answered all the questions that this guy asked, which was the majority of my private information, but not my bank account information. But they have my credit card information, so theoretically, if I hadn't canceled that card, uh, they could, you know, find out my all my bank information somehow or other, maybe steal money. So we talked, he uh, said he was putting me on the PPO plan and he told me there was going to be a deductible, sorry, no no deductible, but there was going to be a copay. And I was like, well, I don't have a copay with my current provider or uh, insurance company. So why are you guys going to be charging me a copay or having me pay a copay? And he said, well, after we're done, I'll look into getting that adjusted for you. Um, and I thought it was a little bit odd that he wasn't going to right off the bat get that adjusted for me. Um, and I did have to tell him more than once that I was switching Medicaid. And um, I he had asked me why I was switching, and I thought it was a little bit of a weird question. Um, he also asked if I had any new pre-existing conditions, and I said, well, Everything that there is to say, um, Buckeye already knows, so you'll be able to access that information. And um, so he didn't ask any more about that. And, but, you know, it was was weird that he asked why I wanted to switch. And, but I did explain that. And so he realized that I wanted to get the switch done immediately rather than later on. Now, in talking to him, he then said there would be a one-time fee of $382.89. And I asked, well, what's that for? And he said, well, if you switch providers, your Medicare provider, or Medicaid provider, sorry, then the effect the effective change occurs on January 1st not immediately to change it immediately you have to pay this fee and i definitely need to to change it immediately and he said that if i pay the fee it will be done by midnight i was like great i kind of 
I'm, I'm kind of over a barrel, but okay. So a few more questions, uh, you know, asking about, you know, so I understand everything about the insurance. And then he says, okay, I'm going to send you a link. Please go through the document that's attached or not document, but a series of pages uh, and uh, complete that. And then we can finish this up. <clears throat> so I got the link. I went to it. I didn't notice the website name. Um, and that's on me because if I had looked, I would see that it says, and this is important. So take note of this innovative partners, lp.com. So it's enroll.innovativepartnerslp.com. And since I'd given him my email address, that was part of the, um, website address that was or not really the address it's it's information that's being passed via the link to the website that I was going to so I clicked on that link and the first page comes up and it asks for my birthday and so I typed in my birthday and you know that that makes sense there are other websites that I've I interact with on a regular basis where they want my birthday first. The next thing uh, comes up and it says um, there are three check marks boxes and each one says, I understand and agree to the, the joinder agreement. I understand and agree to some other thing. I understand and agree to some other thing. And so I opened up the first one because I'm a little bit um, I don't know, something just fell a little bit off. And so I opened it up and I start reading bits and pieces and I notice it says you'll work a minimum of 500 hours on the internet. And I noticed that it was talking about limited partnership and stuff that was suggested it was like multi-level marketing or some kind of a direct sales business or something like that. And I was very confused about that. So I went back to the man that I was talking to, the scammer, uh, whose name was supposedly Jay. And these guys are down in Florida. And I said, look, that first link takes me to some kind of a, a an empl uh, employment or, f or freelancing agreement. And I don't want to, I'm not asking to, to, work I'm asking you know I've got a job I'm asking to um, to get health insurance from your company and he's like oh well that's not what it's about uh, and I was like that's what it says and then I opened up the, the third document and he's and I look at it and I see it says the, it's called like a healthcare wrapper and I was like okay uh, that sounds on odd and the joinder agreement the first one they opened also has a weird name for because he claimed that the joinder agreement was just an application when I asked him before I opened it and then afterwards it's like this is joining a part as a partner a limited partner and so when I opened up this third one this healthcare wrapper it says at the beginning this is for employees of innovative partners and these limited partners and so I go back to him. I was like, look, this says this. And he's like, oh, no, 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 no. I said, look, I need to talk to your supervisor because this isn't right. So he puts somebody on the phone who identifies herself as Melissa. And Melissa says she's like trying to explain it away. And she says that, you know, it, this is you're not actually agreeing to something. It's not a contract for you. You are just being advised that this is the relationship between us, supposedly the health insurance company, but really innovative partners is the us and um, the underwriter for the insurance. And I was like, yeah, but OK, great. But that's not what it says. So she argued with a little, me a little bit. And then I kept on explaining to her and she was like, oh, well, yeah, it sounds like something's not right. And I said, look this is very concerning because this is a legally binding contract 
And if I sign this, this means that I'm going to be stuck doing a job for a company I don't want to work for. And it's going to end up going to court. And guess who's going to be called into court because they were directly involved in signing me up? You and, and Jay. And I'm sure you don't want to do that. And she was like, you know, I, and also, and this is going to, this is, this is affecting every patient you have signed up. And I said, I want you to contact your legal team and tell them they need to fix this because what you're telling me is not what I'm seeing. And this is without the third document being seen at all. And she was like, okay, so I, if I understand correctly, and I, we t discussed the fact that this was a recorded conversation. Uh, so I said, she said, if I understand you correctly, you want me to contact the legal team to have them save your recording. I was like, well, that's part of it. I'd like that too. But the documents that we are supposed to be agreeing to need to be corrected to match what you are describing to me, not what there is now. It's legally not a match at all. So, okay, I will do that. And I said, also, I want the legal team to call me and let me know what's going on. And I want the legal team to contact all of the patients with the updated documents so they can uh, get rid of the f incorrect agreements and agree to the new agreements. She's like, okay, I'll do that. So then I say to her, look, there, um, there's a link to the program plan, and it shows the, the payments. And the first payment is the uh, $382.89 that Jay told me about. And then there's a $200-some dollar payment, monthly payment. And I just want to verify, according to Jay, that I will not pay that amount, the 200 and some dollar amount, that that will be paid for by Ohio Medicaid. And she said, um, well, I need to check. Um, let me just verify your phone number. So we verified my phone number and she put me on hold. And several minutes later, she hung up. And I thought, well, that's weird. I thought maybe, maybe got disconnected, right? So I waited a while for her to call me back. She didn't call me back. And so I went back to doing my charity work that I had been doing when I made the call. And no callback. So, or, um, like mm, a little bit more than two hours later, or sorry, not an hour and a half later, still no callback. So I call up and some guy answers the phone. I didn't catch his name. And within 20 seconds, he's hung up on me. I call back again. Somebody else hangs up on me. I call back again, getting somebody identifying themselves as Brittany. And within 20, 25 seconds, she hangs up on me while I'm trying to explain why I'm calling in that I talked to Jay and Melissa. And then I call in again, and I'm really irritated at this point. And I get some guy who says he's Jay, or sorry, um, uh, Anth, no, 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 oh my God, somebody and Anderson. Um, well, anyways. And I say, don't hang up. And I, I've been hung up on repeatedly now, and I'm getting really pissed off about this. And I explain why I'm calling, and he says, okay, well, you need to talk to customer service, and um, I'll transfer you. And I say, okay. And he said, would you like the phone number? I said, I can't. I'm driving. He said, okay, I'm going to transfer you now. And so he transfers me, and then this automated message comes on stating that there's something wrong with my caller ID, and then hangs up on me. And then I'm like, oh no. I clicked agree, completed the tra that, that form. So they were going to charge me that 300 and some dollars. I had been scammed. I realized at that point it was definitely a scam. It wasn't line problems. They were hanging up on me because they knew that I was going to catch them in the act. Ironically, if they had talked to me, maybe things would have gone a little bit differently, but probably not. So I, I immediately, I, I call up my bank. 
I say, hey, this has happened. I want that, that charge to be canceled because they scammed me. Um, and I explain about innovative partners and everything like that. And, and, or, and she, she looks up the charge and it's for innovative partners, not for the health insurance company I thought I was calling. And so I was like, oh, gosh, because I didn't want to cancel my credit card. I just had my credit card changed out a few months ago. And uh, but at that point, it was obvious to me that I had definitely been scammed and they had enough information to steal from my my account and also to steal my identity. So the very nice lady that I was speaking to said, you need to call up one of the credit companies and uh, issue a fra uh, fraud alert, which they will that company will share with the other two companies. So I ended up calling one. Um, she canceled my card for me. She said, go to the, the one of the local branches and you can pick up a replacement. So I did that. Um, I did the fraud alert. And then I called the health insurance company I was trying to sign up with and I filed a fraud complaint with them. Then I called up Medicaid uh, hotline and I <laughs> did what I was trying to do in the first place. So hopefully I've nipped that one in the butt. Now I've got to just deal with the other lesser scam that I got tricked into. Um, yeah, that was, that was a product that was being advertised online and, um, part, I never got the product of course. And partway through the process, um, I realized it was a scam when I stopped doing it, but the transactions have been going through anyway. So, I have to talk to uh, I have to talk to my financial institution again to see how much of my money can be recovered. Hopefully all of it. Hopefully it's only been the last three months because I don't remember exactly when it was that I, t I was on that website. But you know, when you see those um, advertisements on YouTube, advertising products and services, from what I have seen so far, and including the one that they scammed me on, almost all of them are scams. And clearly the YouTube doesn't really care because some of them are blatantly obvious that they are scams. And even after I report those as scams, I report them for false medical information or whatever, sometimes those messages stay up for a long time before they seem to disappear. But also I do block. Now I did notice that Alphabet and Google and YouTube are not really blocking. It's kind of like when you go to an, uh, a controlled intersection and they've got the walk button and you push the walk button and you wait and you wait and you wait and it doesn't really seem to do anything, right? That's because it doesn't. That's a, the but, that crosswalk button in most places is a pacifier to make you think you have control over the intersection, but you don't. There are intersections that are not busy where a crosswalk button might work, but any busy intersection, that crosswalk button doesn't do squat except for pacify you because you think you have control and you're going to get the light to change sooner, but you don't. Try. If you find one that actually does it right away, you're in an unusual spot. Anyways, um, so yeah, um, be very careful. There are all kinds of scam emails. There are all kinds of e scam phone calls. Um, there are people who are scammed repeatedly for years and years and years for love, for greed, for um, hope, for all kinds of reasons. Um, it's, just, it's just stunning how many people out there uh, both people domestically and people internationally target Americans, especially the very young, the very old, the people who are physically or mentally or both handicapped um, are all big targets, uh, especially in countries that have a lot of money. Even though you and I don't have that situation, they don't care. These scammers have most of them have no hearts. They're just black hearts and they will 
rob you for every cent that they can for as long as they can. And if they can hook you and make you think you're in love with them, they'll do that so they can go for years stealing your money. Then again, there is also the problem of civil forfeiture in the United States where the government steals your money. Yeah, the police, the DEA, the FBI. But that's a, that's a separate video. So be careful when you are shopping online at a website that you're not familiar with, when you are ma going to look for a phone number on the Internet, be very careful where you look for that information because you may fall victim to a scam just like I did today or like I did a few months ago. It's been a long time since I've been scammed, so it's a good reminder to be careful. I thought I had slipped through that other scam, the, the smaller one this, earlier this year, but clearly not because there's a charge every month. Yeah. Mm. Very annoying. I hope you don't get scammed, and I hope that if you are being scammed, and um, I hate to say this, but I'm going to be quite honest with you. I have been dealing with for years now certain um, Indian scammers who pose as um, recruiters and I've had to block them repeatedly from emailing me because every time they get a new employee they would email me from that employee even though I told them to take me off their list and so on and so forth. Um, definitely I will be going to the FBI's website to report this particular incident and if you look up Innovative Partners on the Internet, you will find several mentions of health insurance fraud. And, yeah, it is far too common in this country. I know in Indonesia, having lived there for a long time, that fraud is also very, very common there, including fake shamans and faith, fake faith healers and all that kind of crap. Um, but... Yeah, just be careful. When in doubt, it's probably a scam. Never give your personal information until you have verified and are in no more doubt. And this time around, I almost paid with identity theft. So be very, very careful. I don't want it to happen to you. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day without scamming. Being scammed, I mean. Or scamming. Yeah, either way. Yeah. Scam-free life. <laughs> Hi. Thank you for watching my video. And I'm, I hate doing this, but things have gotten pretty uh, sketchy with my employer. And um, without going into all the details, which I have covered at other times, um, at least in part, I need some financial assistance. If you have the opportunity to do so, that's great. If you don't, even if you can just put in a, a word of support in the comments, that helps. To to have even just that is, is good. Uh, but financially, uh, I need to be able to carry on doing what I'm doing with these channels. Not so much this channel, uh, not, I'm sorry, not so much the Eclectician channel, which is mostly just me learning about stuff and sharing it with you, but with my Glenn's Fast Reviews channel, where most of what you see that I review, I've purchased myself, or I've gotten at a food pantry, or somebody gave to me because they know I do reviews. But I have invested huge amounts of money in it. And at this point, with a uh, little over 1,800 uh, viewers, um, I'm earning maybe $125 a month, which doesn't cover the cost of what I've done, let alone the ongoing cost. And then even worse than that is my third channel that's at my, is uh, the PC Expert Amateur, which I have invested a large sum of money, money that I should have been saving for my retirement um, because I wanted to be able to present a lot of information about uh, fans and air coolers and water coolers for computers and other things as well 
And in order to do that, I had two choices. I either had to make deals with manufacturers and sell my soul or stick to my ethics and pay for things myself in order to not be beholden to somebody and not feel like, oh, I owe them. Um, so, yeah, it's it's pretty costly. And with the situation with my employer, Amazon, in which uh, the workers' compensation company, Sedgwick, refuses to fix my shoulder, which was injured at work over a period of months last year because Amazon's management refused to abide by their own policies to provide me support. Um, I may end up having to pay for the surgery myself with the help of my insurance, and that will still be very expensive. And then uh, I would be out of work for at least a month. So switching to another job it would be hard because if I come to you and you and I say, hey, um, I, really, I want to work for you, and you're like really interested in me, and then I say, oh, by the way, in the near future, I'm going to be having a shoulder replacement, so um, I will probably be out of work for a month. You're probably going to say, uh, I'll pass. Thanks, though. Which would actually be illegal, and you won't tell me that's why you're not choosing me. But, you know, it is a problem, especially with me being as old as I am. I'm, 50, I'm almost 58. So if, if you could please, if you can either go to the, uh, my YouTube channel, Glenn's Fast Reviews, and you can make any kind of a donation on there, any size, any time you want um, through that, because that's my monetized channel. Or you can go to patreon.com, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Glenn M-I-I. That's G-L-E-N-N-M-I-I. And you can make a recurring donation. Um, the smallest one I have on there right now is uh, $10. If that's too big uh, for you to give on a monthly basis, let me know. I can always add a smaller one than that. Um, you know, I just need to know. Um, but again, I, I, if you are financially strapped, please don't send me money. I don't want somebody else getting into trouble financially just to help me. Um, that would weigh very heavily on my conscience. So thanks again for watching this video. And, uh, Let's make the world a better place.